Hello everyone, in this video we will be reviewing receivable financing, which is how entities with urgent need for cash may raise money out of their receivables. The four common forms of receivable financing are pledge or hypothecation, assignment, factoring, and discounting of note. Pledge or hypothecation involves making all of an entity's accounts receivable as collateral for a loan. When the entity collects on the receivables pledge, the entity then turns over the collections to the bank or lending institution. Among the four forms of receivable financing, pledge is the easiest to account for since it requires only a disclosure in the notes to financial statements. No journal entry is required. Assignment differs from pledge as assignment involves a specific accounts receivable. In assignment, the assigner transfers some of its rights and some of its accounts receivable to the assignee. The assigner, however, still retains ownership of the accounts receivable assigned. Thus, the assignor still carries the accounts receivable assigned in its books. The assignee normally lends the assignor only a certain percentage of the accounts receivable assigned. Assignment may be done either on a non-notification or notification basis. On a non-notification basis, the assigner collects the payments from the customers who do not know that their accounts have been assigned. The assignor then remits the collection to the bank or lending institution. On a notification basis, customers know that their accounts have been assigned, and so they pay directly to the bank or lending institution. Factoring is the sale of accounts receivable. Since ownership of the receivables has transferred to the factor, the factor assumes all the risks and has no recourse should the receivables become uncollectible. Customers are normally informed of the factoring. There are two forms of factoring, casual factoring and factoring as continuing agreement. Casual factoring is a one-time sale transaction that results to a loss, whereas continuing agreement is a recurring and ongoing purchase by a finance entity of all the accounts receivable, both current and future, of a certain entity. Continuing agreement involves accounting for factor charges and factors hold back. Discounting is the process of obtaining cash on a note before its maturity date. The payee of the unmatured note endorses the note to the bank and the bank lends out an amount equal to the maturity value of the note less interest deducted in advance. The endorsement by the payee of the note may be either without recourse or with recourse. An endorsement without recourse excuses the endorser from any future liability in case the note is dishonored. Since all the risks and rewards on the note have been transferred to the bank, the note is directly nice from the books of the payee with a credit to notes receivable. An endorsement with recourse makes the endorser liable to the bank if the note is dishonored. An endorsement with recourse can be accounted for either as conditional sale or secured borrowing. A conditional sale involves recognizing a loss and a contingent liability note receivable discounted. A secured borrowing involves recognizing an accounting liability, liability for note receivable discounted. A secured borrowing recognizes interest expense instead of a loss. Assignment can be done either on a non-notification basis or notification basis. On a non-notification basis, the assignor remits the collections from customers to the assignee. On the other hand, on a notification basis, the assignee gives notice of the collections from customers to the assignor. Assignment is recorded as a debit to accounts receivable assigned and a credit to accounts receivable. Observe that the assigned accounts are still carried in the books of the assignor. The assignor shall disclose its equity in assigned accounts as follows. Accounts receivable assigned less note payable bank equals equity in assigned accounts. Two forms of factoring are casual factoring and factoring as continuing agreement. Casual factoring is just like an ordinary sale of an asset where a loss is recognized on the difference between the proceeds received and the carrying amount. In continuing agreement, the factor typically charges commission for assuming the credit and collection function of the entity. Moreover, the factor usually withholds a certain amount called the factor's holdback as protection against customer returns, allowances, and other special adjustments. The net proceeds from the factoring is the remaining balance after deducting allowance for sales discount, commission, and factors holdback. 
When all the receivables factored have been collected, the balance of the factors holdback after customer returns, allowances, and adjustments is returned to the entity. The following are the relevant computations for discounting of a note. The sum of the principal of the note and accrued interest gives us the carrying amount. Accrued interest is computed as the principal times interest rate times lapse period. Take note that the lapse period is counted from the date of issuance of the note to the date of discounting. The maturity value less the discount or advanced interest gives us the net cash proceeds from discounting. The maturity value is the sum of the principal and the interest for the entire term of the note. The discount is computed as the maturity value times discount rate times discount period. Take note that the discount period is counted from the date of discounting to the maturity date. The difference between the carrying amount and the net proceeds is the loss on discounting of the note. Say we have a 1 million peso, 180-day, 12% note dated July 1 and discounted without recourse on August 30 at 15% discount rate. Following the formulas from the previous slide, we should get the following amounts. You can pause the video if you want to try computing these amounts yourself. Take note of the following. In computing for the maturity value, the interest is solved as 1 million pesos times 12% times 180 over 360. 180 days is the full term of the note. The discount is computed as 1 million 60,000 pesos times 15% times 120 over 360. 120 days is the number of days from the date of discounting to the date of maturity. The accrued interest receivable is solved as 1 million pesos times 12% times 60 over 360. 60 days is the number of days from the date of issuance to the date of discounting. If a note is endorsed without recourse, the risks and rewards have been effectively transferred to the bank. Hence, the entity derecognizes the note with a credit to note receivable. Let's have another example. Say we have a 2,400,000 peso, 6-month, 12% note dated February 1 and discounted on March 1 at 15%. Following the formulas, we will have the following amounts. If a note is endorsed with recourse, the discounting can be accounted for either as conditional sale or secured borrowing. A conditional sale involves recognizing a loss and a contingent liability, note receivable discounted. Note receivable discounted is deducted from notes receivable in preparing the statement of financial position and disclosed as contingent liability in the notes. On the other hand, a secured borrowing involves recognizing interest expense and accounting liability, liability for note receivable discounted. Observe that the journal entries for discounting without recourse and with recourse are very similar. The difference is in the account credited for the principal. Discounting without recourse credits notes receivable. Conditional sale credits notes receivable discounted and secured borrowing credits liability for note receivable discounted. Moreover, secured borrowing recognizes interest expense instead of a loss. To properly account for the transfer of receivables, the entity needs to determine whether substantially all the risks and rewards have been transferred. If the answer is yes, then the transfer is accounted for as a sale. If the answer is no, then the transfer is accounted for as a secured borrowing. And that ends our Receivables Lecture Series. Please feel free to leave your questions and comments in the comment section of my FB post. Don't forget to try out the sample problems posted in our FB page to further refresh your memory and enhance your understanding. Bye!